There's a version of you that never sleeps in, never skips training, never wastes time. There's a version of you who never fails. It is waiting for you. Genuinely ask yourself a question, you at home. If you had done those things for the last two years, you never skipped a training, you never wasted time, you never scrolled TikTok, you never jerked off to porn, you never sat aimlessly on the internet typing in garbage, never played video games, you never wasted time. You never skipped training, you were training every single day. You never slept in, you were never lazy. There's this version of you. Imagine the person you would be. Genuinely imagine what you would look like. Imagine where you would live. Imagine the car you would drive. Imagine how much your woman would respect you. Imagine the love you would see in her eyes when she looks at you with adoration like a king. Imagine your existence. That person is waiting for you. And the only thing that's stopping you from being that person is your monumental laziness. You can have it. The universe is very giving. It will give you anything you work for. I've never seen somebody try for something with all of their might and not get it. The only people who do not have the things they want are the people who do not try for them. I've never seen a person wake up and say, my only dedication in life is to solve a Rubik's Cube and fail. You are not stupid. You are not incompetent. You are lazy and arrogant. It's extremely important you understand that that person is waiting for you and you are declining that version of yourself. In the multiverse, in the many different versions of the universe that exist, there is a version of you that does those exact things. And he is a greater person than you can even fathom. You can transform yourself into that guy. You can be a top G. That's exactly what I did. I knew who I was going to have to end up being before I became that person. My brother and I are not from rich families. We are not from advantaged beginnings. But I knew I had to be a big, strong, fighting billionaire. That's what I knew I had to be. I wanted to be Batman, so I became Batman. It's extremely important that I got up knowing what I wanted to be and did it. And it's also another important point I want to make because I tweeted this last night. I don't know if I have the screenshot. Pain is an extremely important part of the equation. Pain is the elixir of success. When people say this bad thing happened to me and I'm suffering, I say good. It is pain which is required. It's one of the elements in the chemical reaction. The chemical reaction requires five particular in dis, uh, distinct compounds and you have four and you're missing one it simply doesn't work pain for a man is one of the most important elements in becoming successful batman is batman because they killed his parents if they did not kill his parents he would not be batman you're supposed to suffer you're supposed to take that pain the worst thing that could happen to you as a man is you live a life with no pain in it to be born into a rich family and have a nice easy life and be given money and you don't have to go to the gym and not have to train because you have bodyguards and sit around like a fuck up you're going to be miserable and unhappy and a drug addict buying prostitutes you're only going to have women who adore you you're only going to feel confident in yourself and feel happy when you've been through hell and come out the other side the pain is required and you'll often notice that people who are better than you are people who have suffered more than you have suffered so the person who is waiting for you he requires your motivation it also requires huge amounts of pain so when bad things happen to you do not sit at home and lament do not feel sorry for yourself. Instead, look in the mirror and say, thank you, God, for giving me one of the ingredients that is needed for the chemical concoction that is going to turn me into a superhero. Because pain is an extremely important one. In fact, it's one of the most important ones for a man. Yeah, and there's one thing you missed uh, here as well. And you're saying, imagine the woman you'd have. Imagine the physique you'd have. Imagine the, the, the bank balance you, you'd have. Here's another one. Imagine the friends you'd have. Because the question I get a lot is, hey, I want to come hang out with you. Hey, I want to meet you and your brother. Hey, I want to be at that table. Um... Why would I want you at my table? The person who Andrew just described in this post is the type of person I want to be around. These are the Justin Wallers. These are the Alex Stanchus. These are the people who do not quit, who do everything they're supposed to do all the time, every day. And just by coincidence, those people end up at my table. Birds of a feather flock together. So don't ask me, oh, I want to meet you. How can I work with you? How can I hang out with you? You'll end up at the table with other millionaires, billionaires, smart, successful, strong people if you are one of them. If you're going to be a little weak, fat, broke dork, uh, no one's going to want to hang out with you. Discipline is the key to success. If you cannot force yourself to do something you don't want to do, how are you ever going to put yourself through the suffering required for greatness? If you cannot force yourself to train when you do not want to train, if you cannot force yourself to work when you don't want to work, if you can't force yourself to not log into Pornhub or force yourself to eat right, how can you possibly ever become a monumentally successful person if you cannot control yourself long enough to do what must be done as opposed to what you feel like doing? The only people who get to live their lives based on how they feel are women and children. Children can cry because they feel like crying, as can a woman. 
A woman can start an argument because she feels like arguing, as can a child. A man must do what he is supposed to do, regardless, irregardless of how he feels. That is the key component to masculinity, is discipline. If you do not have the discipline to dedicate yourself to anything, you are going to fail and be crushed by the people who can. If you only go to the gym when you feel like going to the gym, you're never going to be as strong as the people who go to the gym when they don't feel like going to the gym. That is a reality of life. So, I train every single day. I've actually heard from some people saying, you overtrain. And I explained to them, one, I don't believe in rest. I'm not you, I'm not pussy, and I'm not broke like you are, Mr. Fitness Trainer, standing around the gym teaching people for $50 an hour. I don't need to listen to you. Secondly, I don't train because I want to get bigger. I train every day because it is difficult to train every day. It hurts. I don't want to. I wake up and I'm busy. I have other things to do. I don't feel like doing it. So I force myself to do it seven days a week, 365 days a year so that I know I'm the kind of person who can do what he doesn't want to do when it needs to be done. I am that man. And it's more of a mental exercise than a physical exercise at this point. How can you ever outcompete me if I can force myself to do the things I don't want to do and you cannot? Discipline is absolutely essential for success and you need to get very comfortable and very used to the idea of understanding that on your path to greatness, there are going to be long periods of time where you hate what you are doing, where you are dissatisfied with the actions you must undertake, where you are tired, where you are stressed. That is why it is difficult. That is why most people won't make it. If the path was easy, everybody would walk it and it would lead nowhere. A hundred people start the path, 99 fall off because it is difficult and the one person who makes it to the end gets the gold. If all a hundred made it to the end and the gold was divided by a hundred, it wouldn't even be worth anything. The difficulty gives it value. The fact that it is difficult to do is the key component into the fact you want it in the first place. If it wasn't difficult, everyone would have it and you wouldn't want it because no one would respect it. It's supposed to be hard. Life is supposed to be hard. You're supposed to think this is terrible. You're supposed to suffer and smile through the pain regardless. Discipline is the key to success in all realms as a man. And if you lack it, you stand no chance. You can give most people a roadmap to success. You can give them a Ferrari with a full tank of gas. And a lot of people still wouldn't make the destination because they would say the drive is too far away. Quitters, they don't have the discipline. You can tell them exactly how to do it. You can give them the mechanism to get there, but they don't have the discipline to complete the drive and end up at the destination. That is the majority of earth. This is your competition. People who even if they are told what to do and people tell them exactly how to do it and help them do it, still quit, still fail because they lack discipline. If they are a quitter, guess what they're gonna do? They're going to quit. No matter how simple the map is to read, no matter how fast the Ferrari is, somewhere along the drive, the sun's gonna get in their eyes, and they're gonna sit there and go, this is, I don't like this, this is hard, and they're gonna quit. Quitters are the number one type of people that nobody can help. If you're a quitter, I can't help you, life can't help you. So if you lack discipline, you lack the very basic building block to any type of success which exists on the planet. By every single metric which can be measured with science, you are going to stay a loser and a failure. Everything is war. All of it. Sitting in the commute without losing your patience is war. Trying to find a way to escape your slave job is war. Keeping your wife happy and your children inspired is war. Training to become stronger than before is war. It is all war and it cannot be avoided. And I'll tell you why it's war, because war is two opposing sides trying to achieve the same goal. Two opposing sides want the same land or the same influence over X land. And the car you want, the Ferrari, you're not the only person who wants it. The reason it's so expensive is because other people want it. The, car, the girl you want, the beautiful woman, everyone wants her. It is war. It is competition. Everything about life as a man is war. It is conflict because you are competing against the other men who want it the same, which is why discipline is such an important thing, which is why you must take the pain and add it to the concoction to become as formidable as possible. Life is war. This idea that you can go through life as a man and avoid war is probably the biggest mistake that most men make because it is impossible for you to achieve anything significant without war. Running a business is war. Running a hotel, running a restaurant, running an online company, it's war. Training is war. Life as a man is war. You need to wake up and view it exactly as what it is. Everything I want, other people want. Everything I desire, other men are trying to get. This is a war and I must outcompete them. That is the best possible mental model you can have. Even in jail, it was a war 
for who could stay most calm, a war who could control their mind the best, a war for who could suffer the least. That is war. I was surrounded by people who lost their minds and I refused. It was a battle and I was successful. Life in and of itself as a man is a never ending struggle and a never ending battle. It is the constant of the human condition. Evolution requires pain. While others complain that they do not feel happy enough, I'm happy I'm struggling. I don't want to be happy. I want to be great. This is the beauty of life as a man. Let me ask you a question. Imagine you're engaged in mortal combat against me, the top G. Somehow, grace from God, a miracle, you have managed to survive longer than a few seconds. You have me in a chokehold and I have you in a chokehold. Both of us are losing air. You're sitting there struggling, understanding you're in pain, about to pass out, wishing you could breathe. And you look across at me and I'm smiling. I don't care. I'm happy to be struggling. I wanted to fight. You wanted to win. I wanted to fight. That's the difference. You're concerned with winning. I wanted to just fight. And we're fighting. That is the beauty of life as a man, to be great. If you concern yourself only with being happy, you are once again acting like a female or a child. Happiness is fleeting. It doesn't even matter. If you're concerned only with the hedonism of happiness, you're gonna drink alcohol and go to parties and go to festivals and take drugs. I wanna be happy. Who cares? I want to be great. I want to be great all of the time. And let me ask you a question as a man at home, genuinely, truthfully. Would you rather be a loser who's always smiling, a happy loser, or would you rather be a stressed winner? Because I'll tell you something about winners. Most of them are stressed. We are stressed. We're stressed. Putin is stressed. Genghis Khan was stressed when his messenger turned up after a four week ride with updates from the battlefront of Iran. I'm sure he was stressed by what he read. Even if it was very good, even if it all looked fantastic, he started to feel stressed. Okay, well now maybe I need to go to Iran. How long is it gonna take me to get there? Maybe we need to send more horses. Maybe we need to colonize her, uh, Iran. He, he felt stress because the beauty of life as a man is to be great. So you have to sit here and ask yourself, do you wanna be a happy loser that's insignificant? Nobody knows you exist. Women don't respect you. Men don't respect you. Nobody cares if you live or die, but you get to smile all the time. Or do you wanna be one of the most important people on the planet with a little bit of stress? Look at Donald Trump. Look what he's going through. Absolutely. So, super strong. And how old is he? 76 years of age? Going through a matrix attack like we've never seen? Imaginary man's lived his entire life without ever committing any crimes. And now suddenly there's indictments and charges coming out of nowhere. He's trying to run for president at the same time. He, I guarantee, is stressed. Does he want to be happy or does he want to be great? Because he's got billions of dollars. He could just drop out of the presidential race, go and move to St. Kitts, oh, yeah. live in a big mansion. He can go to the beach. Some, yeah, easy. He can go be happy. He can get a little cocktail with a little umbrella. But he doesn't, because that's not the way Donald Trump is wired. He is a champion, and he's a fighter, and he is dealing with the stress to become the world's most powerful man once again. He would have never gotten to where he is if he was the kind of person who was concerned about being happy. Ever. He didn't care about being happy. Being happy is for children and women. He wanted to be great, and that requires stress. You know what the great thing about it is? You know what's amazing what God gives, how the whole world becomes full circle? If you stop caring about being happy and you start caring instead about being great, guess what you end up being? Great. Along with great. And you know what? Yeah, happy. You end up happy if you forget about happiness and try to become great. If you concern yourself with happiness, you end up in a crowd surrounded by cannon skanks jumping up and down in a festival doing dumb shit. You will never be successful if you're concerned about being happy, so forget about it. If you lack somewhere, excel somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Counter your weaknesses by honing other capabilities. If you're ugly, become filthy rich. If you're poor, be as strong as an ox. Life is unfair. The primary focus of your energies is to balance the books. Excel in one area if you lack in others. People say to me, Andrew, I'm short. What do I do? I'm short. Okay, God made you short, fine, good. Doesn't matter, you can't change it. What you can do is become as strong as an ox and become filthy rich and monumentally important and extremely influential. You can do that. Uh, people say, I'm poor, you should be strong. Oh, I'm strong, but I don't have any money. Okay, then teach others to be strong. Yes. You, there's always a way you can take your advantages and use them. And by teaming up with other men, the other people, you can build a team in which there are no weaknesses.